we have defined what a retailer is and the role that a retailer plays in a society. Now let us take a look at the types of supply chains that exist and help the retailer in getting the items from the manufacturers factories to the stores near the consumers. Let us take the example of a store near our neighborhood with stocks 2000 items sourced from 500 different suppliers. This standalone store would face the same challenge as us, the consumers, in going to all these 500 different suppliers, factories spread across the geography and getting these items. Moreover, the volume of the sales of this standalone store might not be big enough for it to buy directly in pallets. Hence, the store, which is too little to build its own supply chain, needs to be supported by these large manufacturers. Typically, all the manufacturers own or lease large godowns which are wholesalers or distributors in all the big cities and successively in smaller cities where they send the pallets and stock them and from these wholesalers and distributors which might be either manufacturer owned or owned by third parties and leased by the manufacturers. In these godowns, the received cartons are broken into smaller boxes and these smaller boxes are shipped to the retailer store from the various manufacturers where these boxes are opened and each individual item is picked and put on the shelves of the store and the extra stock is stored in the back rooms. The manufacturer builds the cost of this distribution chain into the cost of the items that he sells to the retailer. Now let us take the example of a chain of stores instead of a standalone store. This retailer who owns the chain of these stores might be buying in big enough bulk now to build his own distribution chain. If this retailer can run this distribution chain cheaper than the cost of using the manufacturers than the extra cost that he has to pay to the manufacturer for using his distribution chain, then the retailer would be making extra profit. Such go-downs that the retailer builds for its stores are called distribution centers or in retail parlance DC, distribution center. These distribution centers work in the same way as the manufacturers wholesalers did. The manufacturers send the pallets from the factories to the distribution center where the trucks are unloaded and the pallets are packed in a storage area called bins. Now, instead of raising the order directly to the manufacturer, the stores place their order to the distribution center and the distribution center sends these items to the stores. Hence, the distribution center now acts as a buffer between the store and the manufacturers. Based on the demand forecast of the stores for the coming days, it places the combined order for all the stores to the manufacturer and as and when it receives orders from the store, it ships them to the store. In the retail module on distribution, we would be deep diving into when it makes sense for a retailer to build his own distribution chain and what are the advantages of this distribution chain over using the manufacturer's distribution chain. So, we have taken a look at the two types of value chains 
that exist in retail, the first value chain is owned and operated by the manufacturer and especially useful for retailers who do not have the strength to run their own distribution chains. This manufacturer owned value chain begins with go-downs or wholesalers in all the big cities where the retailer where the manufacturer sends the pallets manufactured in the factory to these wholesalers where these pallets are stored. These wholesalers in turn might be breaking these pallets into smaller packs and sending them to smaller wholesalers or distributors which are smaller go-downs operating in smaller cities where these cartons are further broken down and supplied to the local retailers. Hence, from the pallets in the wholesalers depot to the smaller cartons in the distributors depot to the smallest cartons which are shipped directly to the store. At the store, these cartons are opened and the items extracted and put on the shelf. This was a value chain owned by the manufacturer or leased by the manufacturer from a third party. The other kind of the distribution chain was the one which is owned by the retailer. Here, instead of the retailer stores ordering directly from the manufacturer, they place the orders within their own supply chain from a distribution center or a DC. This DC which serves a network of stores places the orders on behalf of all these stores to the manufacturer and might be supplied directly by the manufacturer's factory or the wholesaler or the distributors. This depends on the size of the order that the distribution center is placing on the manufacturer. If the order is in the size of pallets, it would be ideally supplied directly by the factories. But if the size of the orders is of the order of the cartons supplied by the wholesaler and so on for the distributors. So these are the two types of value chains that exist in retail. They might be owned and operated by the manufacturer or they are owned and operated by the retailer. Earlier, we have seen that the role a retailer plays. Let us now examine the role the role that each actor of the two value chains that we have seen plays. Let us begin with the first role and that was that a retailer provides assortment to the customers and a market to the manufacturers. Which of these four players do you think plays this role? The four players are in the manufacturer's value chain, the wholesaler, the distributors, in the retailer's value chain, the retailer's distribution center and finally the store. Which of these do you think now plays this role? Since this role means interfacing directly with the customers, only the store here plays this role. Now let us consider the second role and that was of breaking bulk. Which of these players do you think plays this role? Actually, all of these players play this role. Remember that retailer came from the term of breaking bulk. In the manufacturer's value chain, the wholesaler would be receiving the items in big pallets and breaking them into smaller cartons that it would be sending to the distributors. The distributors, in turn, would be breaking these received cartons into even smaller cartons to ship to the store. In the same manner, in the retailer's distribution center, it receives the goods in big pallets or the wholesaler's cartons or the distributor's cartons and breaks them into smaller cartons to ship to the store. Now let us take a look at the store. At the store, these received cartons are opened and each of the items are now taken out and put on the shelf so that the customer can now buy in eaches. 
Hence, all these players, the wholesaler, the distributors, the retailer's distribution center and the store play this role. Now let us take a look at the next role and that is holding inventory. Holding inventory means that the player holds the inventory for the next player in the value chain. Any time that the next player in the value chain needs the items in the quantities or the orders that it wants it in, it can receive the same from this player. So which of these four players play this role? Again, all of them. The wholesaler holds the inventory for the distributors. The distributors hold the inventory for the stores. Similarly, in the retailer's value chain, the retailer's distribution center holds the inventory for all the stores that it serves. Finally, the stores hold the inventory for us, the customers. Now, let us take a look at the last role and that is of providing services. Services is a general term and can have many meanings. Even the fact that a player provides an assortment of choices to the next player is a service. Let us take the example of a service of providing credit to the next player. Providing credit means that the player sells to the next player but does not receive the payment immediately. It gives the goods on credit for some time, that is, it sells to the next player on credit. In the manufacturer value chain, the wholesalers provide this credit to the distributors. Typically, these wholesalers are bigger operators than the distributors and have more financial strength than the distributors. In turn, the distributors sell to the stores on credit which might be a few days or maybe in months. Similarly, a retailer's distribution center provides many other kinds of services to the store. For example, the fact that it takes over the order placement to the manufacturers from the stores upon itself is a service and hence a retailer's distribution center provides many services to the stores its services. In fact, when we'll take a look at distribution center, we'll see that a retailer's distribution center exists only to provide these services to these stores. Finally, the store provides many services to us, the customers. These services range from giving us a choice of these assortments in a place convenient to us, giving us the opportunity to test and feel these products, giving us the information about these items through the salespeople and maybe in some stores as in some Kiranas even selling the goods to us on credit. Hence, the store also provides a range of services to its customers. So let us recap what we have learnt in this module on introduction to retailing. We have seen what a retailer is, the role that a retailer plays for us the customers and the manufacturers as a middleman. Next, we took a look at the two types of value chains that exist in retail and the roles played by each player in these value chains. In the next lesson, we will be examining in what forms does retail touch our daily lives.